Hey, my name is Javi, and we're taking a look at the Soul of Chagokin GX88 Vehicle Voltron. But if we remove this fancy sleeve, we'll reveal the original Japanese name, Guy Rugger. Number 15. Rugger sounds kind of like a slur, so I'm gonna say it often. And the set by Bandai consists of a whole 15 vehicles that combine into a giant super robot. I got my copy at the Big Bad Toy Store, look at the description. And it's hard for me to recommend anything at that price, but in this case, I do. But maybe that's because I had to sell my brain. No surprise. Now I mentioned in my previous Soul of Chagokin Voltron review, link in the description, that I didn't give a shit about the Voltron franchise. But even then, I claimed this guy to be my favorite Soul of Chagokin set. From now I'm gonna call him Lion Voltron for simplicity's sake. As for these guys, I give even less of a shit about Vehicle Voltron. But even then, I like this set just the tiny bit more. So the vehicles are categorized into three teams, air, sea, and land. And these things are numbered, so we're gonna go in order, starting with Rugger 1. I'm not gonna do this voice throughout the whole video. <laughs> it's a cute little rocket ship, nothing much more to say. Rugger 2, aka the Stratos Weapons Module. And this is the perfect number for this piece of shit. I'm just kidding, it is kind of a reach to call this thing a vehicle, let alone an aircraft. But I like it, maybe because it's fun to handle, a bit heavy and cold. Get ready to hear that a lot. Maybe you guys can make a drinking game out of it. You're old enough for that, right? Right? Leave a like if you're a big boy, thank you. It features a set of rubber treads, and they could actually roll somewhat. Just the front of the vehicle, by the way. You can tell by the little headlights. Ruggers 3 and 4, aka the Air Recon Helicopters. These guys feature some cold cockpits. Charming designs, but the propellers are a bit pathetically small. Looks like they're wearing some kind of religious hat. But for that, you can switch them out with a larger set of blades. You get a double-bladed option, which is supposed to be more show accurate. There's a show for this shit? And a triple-bladed option, which is more accurate to the original toy. The propellers can indeed spin, also known as a swivel. Nano Uta, link in the description. He is the swivel, the swivel man. You know these moves are fine, my Rugger 5, the Falcon VT Fighter. I've also seen it referred to as the Command Jet. Both things work. And everything on this little guy feels like die-cast metal. Minus the wings. This one's gotta be the most convincing aircraft of the air team. So, all five Ruggers of the air team, and all five Ruggers of all the other teams, have the ability to combine. Throw on the jazz and let's get into it. First, flip up everyone's landing gear, and this guy's wings. Push down, spin his treads 90 degrees, and make sure this spring-loaded thing is facing forward. And for the helicopters, you want to push on their sides until... Now you know that the red helicopter attaches to the right side. Of course, same thing with the other copter. On the top of this thing is a big red button that you want to push. That allows you to plug in the little rocket, and when you let go of the button, that locks it into place. You could even launch the rocket, but I don't recommend doing that. And you want to take the command jet and flip out these claws. That's going to let you hook it onto the top of Q-Rugger, also known as the Strato Fighter, if you want to be polite. While this this has its own charm, it's not a convincing vehicle at all. Looks more like the torso of a giant robot. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's move on to the C team. Not that they're C grade quality, the ocean, you know. Water. Rugger 6, the communications module. Looks more like a tiny aircraft carrier, and it's unexpectedly hefty for its size. That's right. <laughs> it's actually quite cold in here. I'm not even wearing any pants. Rugger 7 and 8, the space probers. Looks more like they probe... My ass. The sea, they look like submarines. The only diecast metal on these guys are these flip-out prolapses, but they come into play later. Ruggers 9 and 10, the multi-wheeled explorers. We're really reaching now. They look like some kind of ships, but they also have these giant tank treads, which are also made of rubber, and they can roll. These guys are nicely hefty and of a very low temperature. They're basically just blocks of diecast metal. Side note here, Rugger 10's thingies look kind of like Shockwave's tits. Even when I'm not reviewing Transformers, I can't get them off my mind. How could I? Especially when these guys have a transformation. Starting with a multi-wheeled explorer, you want to flip out its head, flip this panel all the way out, and flip the vehicle's head all the way back in. Take a sub, flip out the strut. This white rectangle is actually a button that you want to push, and while holding that button, you want to shove the sub in there. Letting go of the button locks it into place. Red goes with red, and yellow goes with yellow, just as marriage should be. <laughs> On the side of each multi-wheeled explorer, there is a white square, and they push in in opposite directions. Directions. That opens up holes where you can plug in the communications module. And here we have Kai Rugger, also known as the Aqua Fighter. While definitely still a side.
sci-fi vehicle, this is the most convincing team combination. I can't say the same for the combination of the LAN team. Booger 11, the jet radar station. Now we're really, really reaching. This barely looks like a vehicle. I guess it has a cockpit. As for diecast metal, there's none on the outside, but what it does have will come into play very soon. Booger 12 and 13, the rotating personal carriers. These little cars are the lightest of the set. No diecast metal in here at all. And for some reason, these cars have hands. Yeah, they're obviously robot hands on wheels. Rubber wheels. And finally, Rugger 14 and Rugger 15. Also known as your grandpa's car with a suspicious stain in the back seat. They're actually referred to as all-terrain space vehicles, but we know the truth. These guys also feature rubber tires and their entire top sections are cold. But the bottom isn't. The bottom features what looks to be thruster detail, which makes perfect sense because these cars end up as feet. Now let's get the land team combined. Pull down the radar, make sure the slits are facing forward. Take a fist, I mean armored equipment carrier. Fold up its wheels and plug it into the slit. Red's on the right because I say so. And blue's on the left. Take a car, fold up this tab and plug that into the bottom. Same with the other car. And here we have Rick Rugger, AKA the Turbo Terrain Fighter. Ooh, what an epic name for a stupid piece of shit. This thing is fun, but it's barely a combination. I really dig how all the teams have their own combinations. Really good for display purposes. Not everyone has the room for 15 vehicles. I barely even have room for a bed. Leave a comment if you can relate. I'm sure you can. Don't lie. Clean your room for God's sake. Individually, these vehicles are not the most impressive, but when I see them all together like this, I can't help but feel a little tingly in my soul. You thought I was gonna say balls, didn't you? Get your head off the gutter. But let's be honest with ourselves, right? Some of these vehicles exist only to be a part of a giant robot. Starting with the Rick Rugger, you wanna disassemble it, but keep the wheels folded up and the radar folded down. As for the cars, fold those gray tabs up, push those wheels in, and let's leave them like that for now. On to Kai Rugger, disassemble that, but keep them subs on. Take off all the antennas, push these down. You can put these guys to the side for now, they do go somewhere later. Flip this guy over, and open up the whole bottom section. Fold this panel up, and fold out this gray brick. I close it up. Same with the other ship. For the red ship, you want to bring in the yellow car, shove this gray block into the car's backside, and to lock that in, you push it down. Same with the other leg. That should be obvious by now. Bring in the radar station. On the side with the slits, there's this door. Open it, and push that down. That reveals a hole for something. On the other side, open these doors, and push them down. Make sure this side is facing down. Flip these top sections up, and flip these pegs out. Bring the radar station to the top of the legs, and plug them in. I want to give it a little twist to help it in. Same on the other side, of course. Let's get this out again. And all you gotta do is flip up that metal prolapse, push it, and while holding that, you can pull it out easy. You can flip those front skirts down now. Bring in the communications module, fully fold up that tower, and turn it over. Make sure that the bottom swivels and the top crunches. Take it to the top and plug that in. You can unplug it by pushing and holding this button. Bringing in Crew Rugger, remove the jet, and launch the Explorer. Fuck! Turn the treads back around, and you can keep the copters on. But there's a door that you push in. Take an equipment carrier and plug it into the copter. Red goes to blue, and blue goes to red. Just like stealing a car. Turn the hands around, take it to the top, and plug it in. Hook the jet onto the chest, flatten out the wings, and dial form the head. All the vehicles essentially stack on top of each other to form Voltron. This somewhat stupid design invokes a sense of nostalgia for something that I didn't even grow up with. I guess I'm a bit biased towards the retro super robot aesthetic. I love this shit. And the impeccable paint job, perfect chrome, and brilliant mechanical detailing is pure premium Bandai. I don't have a Bandai bootlicker character because I am that character. Yeah, I and I'm pleased to say that today, back lives. Nah, that's not a fair comparison. These guys barely transform. You know what's even more unfair? At least one million of you guys have seen three of my videos that didn't even subscribe. Come on, let your Uncle Jabby know that you love him. Yeah. Fucker. All of the previously mentioned diecast metal results in something that is really goddamn heavy. Very satisfying to hold. If this camera were to pan down, it would break the community guidelines. But the weight of the diecast metal also results in a bit of droopiness. This doesn't mean that the joints are loose, quite the contrary. They're actually quite strong. Strong enough to hold a surprising amount of 
poses. The head can look up and down, rotation at the shoulder, butterfly joint, arm moves out, swivel here, bend at the elbow, wrist swivel, and if we move it to the side, you can move it up and down. Fingers open. Let me take off the jet so you can see this part. The chest can extend for an arc and a crunch. Ratcheted waist swivel. Front skirts move up, which allows for a high kick. Leg can't move back at all. Side skirts move up, which allows for a beautiful spread. Thigh swivel. Bend at the knee. A slight pivot at the ankle, but you could extend it, which allows for some up and down and a beautiful pivot. Articulation on Soul of Chogokin figures is usually good, but never this good. And to complement all that posability, you get a lot of stuff. Assembly is required for this pedestal. Just follow the instructions and you should be fine. You even get the option of a die rugger faceplate, but I'm going Voltron because I'm a dirty American. And once you get it set up, you can store practically every accessory on here, including the antenna from the multi-wheeled explorers. There's even a section at the bottom for the hat. Not everything here snaps in. So I actually prefer the look of the default hands, but you do get the option of fists, open hands. This blue hand has a little slot that allows you to attach this handle, which looks identical to the piece from the back of his head. You even get a cap to cover up the gap. And then you can plug in the electromagnetic whip. Ah, shit. You also get a pair of grabby hands that allows him to hold yet another whip. Kinky bastard. The cord's even poseable. He can also grab a lance, which can extend into a longer lance. Just kidding, it's a separate piece. And of course you get a big sword. This can work as an action actual sword. And you get a pair of propeller holding hands, which allows you to hold the propellers. I assume he pulls them off his shoulders and they pulse with energy. You also get a triple bladed option, both normal and blue. And finally, you get these four pieces, which allows you to plug the propellers into a Banner Imagination Dark Fight Sand. Sure, you get a ton of fun and relevant display options, but he doesn't come with the trailer and anti-aircraft gun, gun, the roller, roller three minifigures. Figures. That's not relevant at all. I just wanted to talk shit. I'm glad this guy turned out as big as he is, especially considering how small the individual vehicles were. Here's Soul of Chogokin Gao Gai Gar, my previous review, the Transform Element Oh Leader, my thermos, and the Soul of Chogokin Lion Voltron. These guys look amazing together. Lion Voltron's design and concept is cooler. I prefer animals over vehicles. Not in that way. But the sheer amount of toys in the set, plus the infinitely fun combination, I think Vehicle Voltron is my new favorite Soul of Chogokin figure. But only by a slight margin. But if not this sexy beast, may I suggest the equally sexy Jabi the Hong merch, which you can access through the brand new merch tab. A triple kiss last time and a quadruple this time. My god, the new year is treating me right so far. The only way this year could get any better is if I get drafted into World War III. <laughs> What a fucking rugger.